I've never done speed dating with a human, thank God. But I love jumping on different sleds and seeing how we get along. Are you retarded? I did it last year with a 2010 M8, and I've done it earlier this winter with the Blast 400 and the Polaris Chaos 850. And last weekend, I finally joined the Turbo Club with a speed date on a boosted machine. It seems like you can't go anywhere these days without getting to arguments about the stock Turbo Doos and now the stock Turbo Polaris. But a lot of people have forgotten that Arctic Cat had a stock turbo back in 2008, and it wasn't an 800, or an 850, or even a 900. It was the M1000 RTR, and my speed date was this clean 2009 model. The first thing I noticed about my date is that she looked pretty big and heavy in the flesh, nothing like her Tinder profile. But her big heaviness was only because of her size and weight. And that's entirely accounted for by her high volume and mass. So you've got to expect her to be big and heavy. Like one of those American land yachts. Or a tank. Or a tanker. A large part of the size of this thing is the engine bay. I love it. It's so big. It's like they thought that adding lots of air space around the engine would make it lighter. I mean... Even with that boondocker turbo in there, you could easily install a bowling alley or conduct an orchestra. Look in front of that intercooler. Easy enough room for deck chairs and a barbecue. And the great thing is that you get full access to everything she's got to offer simply by undoing a little strap on each shoulder. Holding that bulky chassis off the ground is a set of sexy suspenders. With enough metal rods to rebuild Lindsay Vaughn's legs, this means you can ride directly through large trees instead of around them, which is a good thing, because this sled, I found out, works best in a straight line. Which is not surprising, because it's basically a Firecat trail machine with deeper lugs. Connecting the top and the tail of my date are the world's first and only Teflon-coated running boards. They were designed with the explicit intention of killing the rider. Maybe the logic was to make the snow fall off. But in my humble opinion, if the rider is dead, you don't need to worry about snow buildup. So my speed date turned out to be an overweight airhead determined to kill me. But don't let that dainty as a brick makeup put you off. When you put your leg over this baby, she springs into life like a duck on a trampoline. Until you try to cover turn, the RTR 1000 Turbo is a 162, which refers, I'm pretty sure, to the width of the ski stance, not the length of the track. This means that asking your lady friend to lie on her side is like getting a rhinoceros to ride a bicycle. It's not impossible, but it would be much easier on the moon. Still, like any good sled, it starts to flow when you get the skis off the snow and steer with a tail. But transitioning from soft to hard snow, or into a side hill, or out of a side hill, or anywhere basically, is like fighting off a black hole with a shoelace and a Bible. It's possible, but only God knows how. Now, I should tell you that the setting for my date was not ideal for romance. The snow was hard, and although it had released a bit during the day, it was now setting up hard again. I also need you to know that I lost the first 15 minutes of video because my stupid goat gargling, rhubarb rooting, fish tank felting GoPro lost its mind. So most of the riding you see here is second time around when both my elbow joints were really ruptured and my rib cage felt like Angry Ram's punching bag. Seriously, trying to hold this thing on edge in hard snow for 30 minutes would wipe out Robocop, let alone a stick insect like me. So by the time we got to round two, my speed date was slapping me around like a sumo wrestler. I was done, done with this date. I hope this doesn't come across as too negative, like I'm just trying to knock my date. I promise you, knocking this date was the furthest thing from my mind. There's a lot to like about RTR. She floats over rollers and has surprisingly good balance in the air. She moves fast, and although she blows off in public, they don't smell, and the faint uh, fartiness, is a good reminder that under that porky pinafore is a forced induction fantasy of fatal attraction. Ooh, I nearly forgot to mention my favourite part of this plus-sized piece of petrol-powered perfection. The gas tank cap. Why? Why is it this size? What were they thinking? I mean, what do they think we want to fit in that hole? How many dinosaurs 
died to make that plastic cap. Why stop at that size? Why not make it the size of a dinner plate or a tennis court? Oh, just... Right under push it. Oh, is it in? Anyway, this is a speed date and my time is up, so I better hand in my scorecard. To cut to the chase, I would not want this to be the only sled in my bed. Oh, you could have a good time by using that space under the hood to keep a herd of cows or open a restaurant or maybe open an ice skating rink on the running boards. But frankly, I'd rather have a Blast 400 or a Do 600 or a Yamaha Phaser 480, or an Alpha Hawk, or a Chaos 850, or to be honest, pretty much anything. And for comparison, when I speed dated the 2010 M8 last year, I said I'd happily ride it all winter because it felt like a real mountain sled, and I'd be able to do pretty much anything on it, so long as I asked nicely. Can't say the same for this young turbo. So, merci beaucoup, Madame Mille Turbo Compresseur. Arigato gozaimashita. I had fun tonight, I really did. So let's just be friends, okay? <laughs> what happened? Something must have happened. It's not you. It's me. You're giving me the it's not you, it's me routine?